السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه أما بعد فإن أستقى الحديث كتاب الله تعالى خير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار حياكم الله إخوان um, So what I found was that it was very useful allowing um, you guys to ask general uh, questions in terms of Ruqya. Um, there was a lot of um, benefit, inshallah, that was derived. I think a lot of people found it very beneficial um, that their questions were addressed, uh, maybe questions that they had or misconceptions that they had. Um, so inshallah, I'm going to allow you guys um, about half an hour to 40 minutes today, inshallah, um, to ask your questions again um, This time as well um, I've got my Rukia line in front of me So if somebody wants to ask a An anonymous question يعني, You don't want people To know who you are But you have a question um, And as long as it's a short question inshallah, If you WhatsApp me your question um, Then I've got the phone here in front of me um, And inshallah I will um, Respond to your question uh, in an anonymous way so before we go any further if anybody if somebody could just write my number down um, and so anybody who wants to whatsapp me with a, an anonymous question then inshallah you can go ahead and do that so my whatsapp number is 07936 07936 Six one zero eight nine one. Um, so, if you guys have any questions with regards uh, to uh, Rukia and you want it to be an anonymous thing, then inshallah, go ahead. Um, likewise, if you guys have any questions here, then um, feel free to fire away, inshallah. Um, I had to fire through the questions. Uh, last time and I didn't feel that I did a lot of questions justice but that's simply because there were so many coming through and I didn't want to get snowed under um, one thing that I've realized alhamdulillah is that uh, what what I will do inshallah is when I'm writing my book my Rukia book I found that a lot of the questions here were very beneficial to come back uh, and go through the uh, list of questions that people have posed and then inshallah I'll answer them in more detail in that book bi'idhnillahi tabaraka wa ta'ala. So if you guys have any questions then feel free inshallah to ask away. So the website is ruqya-qa.co.uk So r-u-q-y-a r-u-q-y-a hyphen qa.co.uk So the purpose for this website is that there's plenty if somebody wants to go and seek knowledge inshallah on this particular issue then there's enough there to give them a good uh, grounding so it's rukya-qa.co.uk okay and there's another one that sounds very similar to mine uh, but that's not mine i don't have anything to do with that particular website okay um so if you guys have any questions then feel free ya ikhwan to fire away with your questions Okay, so good question to start with. Um, does the jinn move around the body or does it sit in a particular place? Um, so what you what you find is that it varies. There's not a one size you know like a, a one size fits all type answer. So you you sometimes get people who can feel the movement across their body and other times other times um, other times you um other times you uh you know you find that a person has a particular um a particular pain in a particular part of their body okay so 
Um, you might find that a person, um, you know, he's always getting these head rushes and that type of thing. And then uh, when you do the Rukya and you start the reciting, he can feel the pain and, and moving. Other times they feel a pain in a particular part of their body. So they might feel the, uh, the, the pain in their arm. And what I advise you to do is a what you could term a localized Rukya for this. But you can put your hand on that particular area. You can gently massage that area. You may want to just uh, lightly tap that area. You know, don't be pulling out hammers and baseball bats and, you know, rolling pins that you make the roti with. Don't make pull out that type of stuff. But what I mean is just a general, uh, a general light pressure such that, you know, you're not going to harm the person. Um, and so it varies from person. Uh, it, it varies from person to person um, and you know uh, usually if it does sit in a particular part then it will sit in the uh, in the the left side of the body okay so generally you find it sits in the left side but that is not a one size fits all uh, answer and at the same time if you find that there is a particular area which is affected then what you should do is um, you should make cupping or you should cup that area. So have hijama done in that particular area. Okay. So for example, you start the rukya, um, and what's very uh, what's very beneficial by the permission of Allah is when you're making the rukya to have hijama done at the same time. Okay. I realize that for sisters that's not possible uh, unless it's the sister who's doing the rukya and it's the sister who's doing the actual hijama. But at the same time, for brothers, it's something which is very, very beneficial. Um, the sister asks, um, is it okay to do general rukya during pregnancy? Absolutely. Um, as you guys know, as you know, science is now uh, mm -hmm. proving, if you like, that they are saying that um, the baby can hear from a certain age, etc. So it's always very, very beneficial um, to uh, you know, to make ruqya bi'idhnillahi tabaraka wa ta'ala just general recitation of the Qur'an and there's no harm in that insha'Allah um, if you guys see me looking around it's because there's a wasp buzzing around here somewhere um, so the next brother asks um, I've got kidney stones um, sorry I've got kidney stones requiring surgery any du'as that you know that I can recite I'm in uh, great pain Okay, so if you go to uh, uh, Hisl Muslim, which is the fortress of a Muslim, you can download it onto your phone as well. There is a dua which the Prophet Sallallahu he would read. So for example, um, he would say, for example, he'd put, put, put his hand on the area and then he would say, Bismillah, 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 A'udhu Billahi wa Qudratihi, etc. until the end of the dua. And it's only a very, very short dua. Okay, go to... Uh, the fortress of a Muslim, go to the Google Play Store or the iTunes or iTunes Store, wherever it is, and download it from there. Okay, the fortress of a Muslim, and you can find these things. Another thing that I would um, advise you with, Echi, if you've got this type of pain, is to make rukya and recite over olive oil, and then apply that into um, apply that into the area. Um, the uh, the next. The next uh, question is, uh, what effect does music have on someone who is possessed? Without a shadow of a doubt, music, ya ikhwan, is from the words of the shaitan. Okay? And music is something which the shaitan he uses to mislead a person. And, and as Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah mentioned, music is the alcohol of the soul. Music is the alcohol mm -hmm. of the soul. Okay, so what you find, um, Ikhwani, is that when a person is possessed and they are listening to music, they're in a state of happiness and the jinn is, is basically just, uh, you know what I want you to imagine is, uh, if you guys played, ever played like Street Fighter or a fighting game on the, on the, on the games consoles, you have like a life bar, okay? Imagine that life bar is a life bar of the jinn and it starts off at 100%. And as you are doing rukya, 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 that life bar is gradually, gradually getting smaller and smaller and smaller until the end of the light it will get to the end. When you put music on and you start listening to music, that life bar is just going to start gradually getting more and uh, larger and larger and larger. You are only, you are only allowing the jinn to rest and recuperate and regenerate. Okay. 
The next uh, question is, is earning money from hijama permissible? So the Messenger alayhi salam, various ahadith about the, the earning of the, the hijam is filth, etc. There are various ahadith, but from what I know from the scholars is that they've said that it is permissible, although it is not recommended and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. The next question is, when I do hijama on my clients, as I move the cup in the leg, and the arm, the pain is severe, indicating most cases the jinn presence along with Rukya. How can I trap the jinn within the cup as it moves around the particular area? It's very, very difficult to, you know, trap a jinn in inverted commas. Trap a jinn in inverted commas in that type of thing. If you find that it's moving around in certain areas, the best thing that you can do is make dua. The best thing that you can do is whilst you are applying this cup, you make that dua that, oh Allah, you know, um, allow this to be the area where that jinn is and extract it with the hijama by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, does ruqya from a mobile phone work? Can you expand on this? Okay. Ikhwani, what is ruqya? Ruqya is the recitation, the incantation, the recitation of the book of Allah and the uh, ad'iyah, the du'as from the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. The person needs to be in front of you. It needs to be live. The person needs to be in front of you. So there's no such thing as Rukya audio which replaces Rukya. Okay? Rukya audio is not Rukya. That's what I need you to understand. Rukya audio is just audio. It's an audio recording which you know you are, are listening to and you may react to it but that is not ruqya ruqya from the book of allah and the sunnah of the prophet alayhi salam is that which is recited okay so it's not sufficient to you know replace the ruqya it's like for example you know the muaddin now in makkah rather than the man standing up and making the adhan if we just put a mobile phone to the speaker and played that through the speakers this is not the adhan ya ikhwan it needs to be done according to the sunnah okay so ruqya from a mobile phone that type of thing it shouldn't be done um the brother asks can you get jinn possession through ain um i don't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. There are some people who say, yes, you can get possessed through the evil eye. Uh, wallahi, I don't know. Okay. Uh, the next uh, sister asks, as well as ruqya and other medicinal things such as olive oil, is there anything else that can burn or hurt the jinn? Okay. So from experience, there are things like black musk. Okay. Black musk is a very, very, very strong type of scent. It's not particularly nice in my opinion, but if, you know, uh, some ruqa, they have said that placing a bit of black musk on the forehead or even just above, uh, like under the nose, so literally that's all you're smelling, black musk is usually um, quite, quite useful. Other things that may be useful, of course, is the spraying of the water. Um, I don't, I don't recommend people go down the hole, oh, there's this type of bukhur which burns the jinn, because... It's from the way of the magicians to burn the bukhur uh, in terms of dealing with the jinn to invite the jinn. So we don't want to, you know, the jinn don't like places of cleanliness, places of purity. So if you burn the bukhur in your home to make it a place of purity and cleanliness, to smell good, no bats inshallah, there's no problem. But to burn it with that intention that this is going to burn and harm the jinn, then I think we are getting into murky water. So, um, you know, in reality... Uh, there's a lot of things that work from experience. So um, I used to use a massage machine, which is like a vibrating massage machine. And if you found that the jinn was in the arm or the leg or the back, you place the you place the uh, ma uh, the massaging machine on that particular area. And those vibrations they used to be very useful. But I've heard of people who, if they do ruqya without that massaging machine, then like, oh, my ruqya is not effective. Or, oh, you know what, it wasn't a good session today because my thumper wasn't working. You know, this is a problem where we are now attributing more success and more effectiveness to the massager than we are to the book of Allah. And so I always say this and I will stick to this bi is that the recitation of the Quran and the du'as should be 95% of your ruqya. 5% are things like ruqya baths and water and olive oil and a bit of massaging and that type of thing. 95% should be the recitation. Okay, um, 
Uh, the brother asks, I heard from one of the uh, from one of the shayukh that urinating frequently can be a sign of evil eye. Urinating frequently can be a sign of a million things, and to pinpoint it and say that it's the evil eye, in my po- in my opinion, is just going to cause fitna from amongst the people. Um, I get stabbing pain in my arm after a few weeks. Does that pain come from jinn? Because uh, I have been possessed a few years ago. Again, stabbing pain can be one of so many different things, muscle spasms, etc. You know, you get stabbing pain is also a sign of having a stroke, for example, in your left arm. The point that I'm trying to, uh, the, the point that I'm trying to mention is that it's so dangerous for me to sit here now and say, yeah, headache is, you know, getting a headache is a sign of jinn possession. Because you may get a headache for a variety of reasons. Maybe you're stressed and you've got a bit of a headache. Maybe there's... Um, you know something else going on and there's a headache and there is so much that can lead to a headache likewise you know you're urinating a lot likewise you're getting a pain in the left part of your arm but what I would do if a sister knows that she's been possessed in the past and she's getting that pain in that particular part of the body then when that pain occurs I would make rukya immediately and put the put the put your hand in that area etc does the audio of the Qur'an from a mobile phone have the same effect as somebody reciting? Brother Yasin, I think I covered this. Absolutely not. Okay, It absolutely does not have the same uh, effect. Are some people more susceptible to being possessed? Um, so, Allahu Alam, Allah Jalla wa Ala knows best. In reality, a person is going to be more susceptible if he doesn't have the right aqidah, he doesn't pray five times a day, he's not making his adhkar morning and evening, if he's always uh, you know, in a state of impurity and he's not in a state of wudu, his clothes are dirty, etc. etc. Okay? We need to take a holistic approach. Okay? We need to take a holistic approach. And so the, you know, there, there are generally like sisters are more susceptible to being possessed than men. Why? Because of the fact that there is a period when they are impure, when they are, are, when they are menstruating. Because of the fact in general they're working at home, I'm just saying, okay, don't shoot me the feminist, don't get started, okay. They, in general they're working at home, they're cleaning the house, they're cleaning the toilets, they're cleaning the bathrooms, that type of thing where the shayateen are known to reside. So if they're not taking the correct precautions, then in that situation you may be uh, susceptible, okay. So... It's not right to say, you know, women in general, but, you know, or, or every woman is more susceptible than a man. But in general, women are more uh, susceptible. In general, uh, the person who is of a weak aqidah and he is, uh, you know, uh, not firm and he doesn't pray, etc. This person is definitely more susceptible to being possessed and Allah knows best. Is sleepwalking, sleep talking a sign of possession? Sleepwalking and sleep talking. Um, I don't know. I don't know. If someone is suffering from jinn possession and very bad memory loss, will Rukya cure both uh, the jinn possession as well as the memory loss? It depends what is causing the uh, memory loss, Ikhwani. Okay? If the memory loss is caused by the jinn possession, then yes, of course, once that goes away, then that will, that will also go away, inshallah. Okay? If it's not, then you need to train your memory the way you train your mind. Okay? You're not going to be able to memorize. Uh, just like that. So as a hijama therapist, how do I know I have removed the jinn? Meaning, how can I tell from the blood? Um, to the best of my knowledge, there's no way for you to tell simply through the blood that you have uh, removed the jinn or anything like that. Okay. Um, I feel like pregnant women... I feel like a pregnant woman, something moving in my tummy. I went to hospital and I had all the checkups and the doctor said I don't have any problems but something moving in my tummy and just like just like feeling feeling burning my in around my skin around my shoulders again i would make rukya um, and i would drink some rukya water and and go on a course of uh, senna leaves inshallah um while making wudu i can't feel the water on the left side okay um wallahi 
I would first go to the doctors and get that checked out. And if they say there's absolutely nothing wrong with you, all of the 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 you know the the pain receptors and the movement receptors and everything is fine on that one side, alhamdulillah. But if they give you the all clear from the doctors, then in that situation, what I would do is I would make rukya specifically, and I would um, recite over olive oil, and I would specifically put it onto the left part. Of my body and see how you feel you're likely to feel a burning sensation and if you feel a burning sensation then you know that there are uh, underlying issues when sleeping at night and you wake up scared because you see things i.e witch like figures in your dreams they try to scare you and attack you in dreams is that jinn messing with your mind okay Ikhwani, what you need to know is that there are three types of dream okay the first type of dream is a glad tiding from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Okay, you may see the messenger of Allah. You may see uh, Yom Al Qiyamah. This may be a way of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala guiding you and giving you uh, a warning, etc. So it may be a means of your rectification. Maybe you see yourself going on Hajj. Maybe you see yourself uh, doing Umrah. Maybe you see yourself in the grave. These are wake-up calls, warnings, glad tidings, etc. This is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The second thing. Is that the second type of a dream is the whispering of the uh, the whispering of the mind. So you see a, a red bus during the day and you dream about a red bus at night. OK, or you watch zombies on the TV and you dream about zombies. OK, the third thing, the third type of dream is a dream from shaitan. OK, now if a person is constantly dreaming about snakes and dogs and um, spiders and blood and graves and people trying to kill them and that type of thing then in that situation I would definitely definitely make Rukya I would definitely make Rukya because dreams very often are a sign of uh, a person's issues okay so it's like uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving the slave a uh, a heads up, a, a, a sign that you are suffering, that there are issues here, okay? So constantly dream about snakes, dogs, that type of thing, blood, graves, that type of thing is a sign usually that you have an issue, okay? Um, if, however, though, you're seeing these figures once every so often, then don't worry about it. Now, what should you do when you have a bad dream? You should, um, of course, you'll be awake. You seek refuge with Allah. A'udhu billahi min shaytanir rajim. And you uh, spittle over your left shoulder three times. Go up, and if you want to, you can go and make wudu. You can pray two rak'ah, and then you can go back to sleep and sleep in a different uh, position than the one that you woke up in. Okay, you may want to recite Ayatul Kursi. Okay, all of these things are going to benefit you, meaning make the remembrance of Allah, meaning seek refuge with Allah. If you're doing this and then you're still getting these dreams on a regular, then I would uh, definitely make Rukya because it may be that there's something else going on. Is it permissible to use the Bible on a possessed person if the Quran isn't available? Absolutely not. Using the Bible on a possessed person in this way is disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, because within this Bible, there are those things which are outright shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That they say that Ar Rahman is has taken a son. You've come with a terrible thing. Yeah, and the heavens and the earth and the mountains, they nearly turn to dust because of what you have said. So definitely do not use the Bible. And also, I don't know if you're a Muslim, the person who asked this question, but why would you use the Bible when the Quran is not available? Now say this in my hand here is a Mus'haf, is a copy of the Quran. If this isn't available... I'm not going to do anything with this, okay? I'm not going to put this on the person's head or put it on his chest and say, I order you by, you know, like the, the Christians do with the cross. No, 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 no. I'm going to recite it. I'm going to recite it. So if this mushaf isn't available, every Muslim pretty much knows Surah Al-Fatiha. So it's better for you to recite Surah Al-Fatiha for half an hour or for an hour than it is for you to even recite a single sentence from the Bible. Uh, right. Ikhwani, leave the question, leave the answers to me, please. Barakallah feekum. Is making rukya on food or water 
and drinking not the same as a so-called khatam on food. No. So the khatam is that which the Sufis and the Brailwis do every Thursday, believing that the soul of the dead person comes back and they read, uh, I don't know what they read, and they make the favorite food of the deceased person and they have some wacko Hindu uh, inspired beliefs. This is not the same as reciting the book of Allah seeking a cure. Um, if medication and rukya isn't helping someone and they have stopped praying and living their daily life and they have been told they are suffering from depression, what should be done? It's been nearly a year. One second. It's been nearly a year and they refuse rukya or even the hearing the Quran. It freaks them out. What should be done is that rukya should be made on them. Um, can cerebral palsy of a toddler be treated with one hour daily ruqya? Ikhwani, with all of these things, with all of these things, what you need to know is that it's your yaqeen. You need to know that it's your level of certainty, your level of trust, reliance, tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which affects or which has the effect by the permission of Allah. Like Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah he mentioned is that the Qur'an it is like a massive sword but it can only be used if the arm is strong and your arm, and, and the arm is your uh, yaqeen, your certainty, your trust, your reliance, your belief, your iman, your aqeedah. All of these things they, they uh, influence how effective the ruqya is. Now you know there were three men who got stuck in a cave and a rock covered the ro rock covered the opening of the cave okay and they didn't have anything to move the rock with and they each made dua and every time they made dua a part of that that rock it moved gradually 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 the point that i'm trying to get you to see is that we have dua and so many of us are jokers when it comes to dua excuse my directness we're jokers in that we just think you know, somebody says, brother, what can I do? And you say to him, make dua. And he's like, oh, just dua? Is that all I have? And he doesn't know that this is what the strongest weapon of the Muslim is his dua. It's his turning to Allah with complete tawheed, complete submission, calling upon him without any partners and relying upon him. He doesn't know that this is his strongest weapon. Okay, so in answer to uh, Umi Zoya, then yes, in this situation, look, every disease has a cure. Now, somebody might come and say there's nothing, there's no cure for this. But look, you recite it with complete yaqeen, making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and leave your affair to Allah jalla wa ala. And if he wills, he will give you a cure. Okay. There is something pre preventing me from reciting the Qur'an for long, I can't help it. Wallahi, I don't know what's preventing you. It may be your sins, it may be you turning away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or it may be a jinn, okay? And so what I advise you with is, uh, you know, you need to struggle against yourself. And if something is preventing you from reciting the Qur'an, Nothing is preventing you from raising your hands. Nothing is preventing you from raising your hands and making dua to Allah that he allows you and gives you the tawfiq and the ability to read that Quran. Okay. And so my advice to you is take, get off here, go and make wudu, put your phone down, get off social media and go and recite from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From a general point of view, or however you want to comment, how does uh, one do ruqya in their room? Okay, how does one do ruqya in their room? And let's let's make that more general. How do you do ruqya in your house? Okay, and you know, uh, there's it's on my website ruqya-qa.co.uk. Is how to get the shayateen out of your home. Okay, how are you going to do? What you're going to do in order? to get the shayateen out of your house, out of your room, that type of thing. The first thing is it starts when you enter the house. If you don't say Bismillah, the shaytan comes in with you. Okay, so you enter with your right foot and you say Bismillah. The next thing is that you should be doing is you should be reciting Surah Al-Baqarah in your home because the Prophet ﷺ told us that the shaytan flees from the house in which Surah Al-Baqarah is recited. Can I play on a CD? No, you can't play on a CD. You need to stop being lazy and recite it. Can more than one person recite it to make it easier to recite? So I recite a third, wife one recites a third, wife two recites a third, wife 
three recites uh, uh, the next uh, half and wife four recites. No, this is no problem, inshallah. Okay, you should just be completing the recitation of Surah Al Baqarah in your home. Okay, the next thing that you should be doing is you should be making the adhan in your home. Okay, so you should be making the adhan in your home. Can the sisters make the adhan in the house? Yes, but they shouldn't raise their voice to such a level that somebody else, a non-mahram man, is going to hear them. Okay, so you're making the adhan in your house. What's the next thing that you should be doing? You should be, um, you should be praying, or you should be reciting a lot of Qur'an in your home. Great, what's the next thing that you should be doing? There is, uh, there should be no pictures in the house. Take your anniversary pictures down, take your wedding pictures down. I know you look really beautiful and you look really great, but you need to know that the Prophet ﷺ, he told us that the angels will not enter into a house where there is a picture. Get your picture frames off the wall, your kids are really beautiful, but get rid of them, okay? Because it's affecting your house. And if the angels don't enter into your house, the shayateen are going to enter into your house. If you're listening to music, stop listening to music, because if you're listening to music in your house, what you're doing is you are putting a big banner outside of your house saying hey you devils come and join me tonight the next thing that you need to be doing is when you are eating say bismillah because if you don't eat if you uh, don't say bismillah when you eat then the shaitan is going to be eating with you and for the sake of allah ya ikhwan eat with your right hands how many grown men do we see eating with their left hands you clean your backside with your left hand and then you eat with your left hand what are you doing uh, ya ikhwan and the prophet alayhi salatu salam he told us that the shaitan he eats with his left hand and he drinks with his left hand other things that you can be doing is that you should be um you should be, you know, you can recite over a bottle of water, a spray bottle if you want, okay? And you can spray that in the house. There is no problem with that, inshallah. Do a lot of supererogatory prayers in your house, okay? Do a lot of supererogatory prayers and read a lot of ex extra Quran in your home, okay? After that, put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't need to hang a taweez. You don't need to have Ayat al-Kursi on your wall. You don't need to, you know... Uh, uh, ha, you know, put garlic on your walls and all of that rubbish. It's not going to benefit you in any way, shape, or form. Okay. Um, so, in more detail, you go to my website, inshallah. Um, when a woman is menstruating and is possessed, can she still do self ruqya? So, yes, a woman who is menstruating, according to the strongest opinion, inshallah, and Allah knows best, she can recite from the Book of Allah. However, we, uh, however, she shouldn't touch the mushaf so you can recite on your phone you can recite on your ipad you can recite uh, from memory there's no problem with that inshallah okay if we move from one country to another if one is possessed with the jinn will the jinn still be with one when traveling Yes, so you don't need to uh, you know get the jinn a ticket or a seat next to you um, in reality, um, the jinn is inside of a person because the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us that the shaitan he flows through the son of Adam like his blood. Okamakal alayhi salatu wasalam. However, this sometimes, sometimes it doesn't apply when a person enters into Mecca. Sometimes, and it's just from the blessings that Allah has placed in Mecca. Um, that when a person enters into Mecca, and generally Mecca more than Medina, that uh, their issues go away. However, sadly, when they leave and they don't do their adkar and that type of thing, sometimes their issues come back. And this is sometimes, I'm not saying all the time, okay? Do you have knowledge on cost for Rukya? Should one charge the other for the Rukya? What makes the measures? Who makes the measures? And how is it calculated? Is it not better for the Raqi to give up on any expectation from the patient and expect all from Allah? Barakallah fiq hayakumullah. Okay, who sets the measures? In reality, um, perhaps the Raqi's phone bill at the end of the uh, month, that dictates the measures. Maybe the Raqi's rent at the end of the month dictates the measures. Maybe his designer jacket at the end of the month dictates the measures. In reality, there is nobody who is setting, there is no... Uh, you know, sort of overall ruling body or guidelines or anything like this. I always say to people, if you're going to pay more than 20, 30, 40 pounds as a max, then, you know, you need to start looking at the situation, okay? Uh, people are charging now for one 
uh, for one session people are charging 80 pounds 100 pounds I've heard people you know absolutely ripped off um, and sadly you know this is going to continue until you people learn to make rukya on yourselves and you men folk you learn how to make rukya and you become the shepherds and you look after your flock and you make rukya on your women folk and you make rukya on your mothers so that these strange men don't have to come into your houses why do some people ask for your name and mother's name and date of birth to find out if the evil eye etc has been possessed Go to my page, my other page. Uh, I'm not managing that page at the moment, but I saw um, somebody's managing it on my behalf. Um, they've posted my status about why a Peer Saab needs your name and your mother's name. My other page is Diaries of an Exorcist. Go there, a couple of statuses down, you'll find the answer there. Okay. Um, Dargahs in India and Pakistan are distributing Taweez. The masses in these countries are being misled. Yes. Um, okay, and begin certain surahs on the paper. Okay, so Ikhwani, what we're finding now, okay, is that people are placing letters like this, okay, Alif, Lam, Mim, Ha, Mim, and uh, you know all of Qaf and all of these different letters. They are placing them now uh, into like a into like a table, and then they're placing these things onto their. Uh, onto their uh, onto their walls and that type of thing and they believe that these letters have some form of special meaning some form of special hidden uh, thing Ikhwani in reality this is something which comes from Sufism that there's a hidden meaning and only our sheikhs and only our, our only our imams know this hidden knowledge which was conveyed directly to them to the Prophet alayhi salat all of this rubbish subhanallah Okay, Hamim and all of these, right? Taha, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what these things mean. Okay, and we, we don't find the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hanging these things or wearing these things or even directing the Muslims to these things. And you know, just because it's Quran and just because it's a few letters, this doesn't mean that we can then just take it and start, you know, putting it all over and believing that it's going to bring benefit in this way. The reality is, Ikhwani, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا There has been in the Messenger of Allah for you the best of examples, okay? Um, and so it's better to follow their way, okay? How if the pictures... They're not on display, but inside of the album, it's hidden. Okay, honestly, I wouldn't even keep these type of things. It's up to you, but I wouldn't keep these types of things. Okay, uh, okay, uh, Akhi Muhammad, Hayakallah, uh, Akhil Kareem, people are putting the Prophet's alleged footprint in their homes and it says some fabricated benefits on this on the side of the paper. What is the ruling on this? You know, we find the Nalain Sharif now, um, you know. You know the Christians have their cross. The Christians have their cross, and all and the Sikhs they have their you know that sword type thing. And you know uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he told us that you're going to follow the way of those people who came before you. You know, and so if the uh, Christians have their cross, then of course the Muslims need something as well. And so they they uh, they take the alleged footprint of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they. Put it on their lapels and they and they make cufflinks out of it and they put it on their heads and they put it on badges and they they do all sorts put it on their hats and and all sorts and they believe it's going to bring blessings. This is no different to writing seven eight six. You are you know what what's this uh, what's this shape going to bring you you know and likewise seven eight six is just a collection of numbers. And if you believe that that brings you benefit, then you have fallen into shirk with Allah subhanahu wa taala. So be very 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 careful. Okay, it's not a means to the shifa or the protection or the blessings from Allah in and of itself it's not going to benefit you so this carries the same ruling as an amulet or uh, or uh, you know the tamaim and these type of things it carries the same ruling ikhwan and all of this is haram okay and Allah knows best um, why don't you do any more diaries of nexus episodes um, I just don't have the time f one uh, please make more videos with my brother Muhammad Tim yeah tell him to come back to the UK he's in Dubai at the moment uh, Hafizahullah. I've been told while doing Rukia and the jinn manifests. Uh, I've been told while doing Rukia and the jinn manifests, light beating on the hand and feet with a miswak stick affects the jinn. You know, I would be really, really careful um, with regards to this. And so I always say to people, don't even go down the route of 
light beating because you know what you're light beating it may be heavy beating for somebody else and we end up what you know what happens where people they murder somebody and then they say oh uh, you know the person was uh, was uh, possessed or whatever else okay can we take knowledge from GLM that's uh, entirely up to yourself we're, we're talking about Rukya here uh, Allah. okay Akhi, I'm seeing a lot of these Tawees from Diobundi friends and family. I thought this was only specific to the Brailwees. Could you shed some light on the Diobundis also uh, believing these things? Okay, Ikhwani, in reality, uh, it's two sides of the coin. Okay, two sides of the coin. And I've uh, got videos on this about them teaching you magic and how to, um, you know, uh, cause divorce between a husband and a wife and then apparently you shouldn't do this, you know, if there's no reason to, like there is a reason, there is a, a valid reason in some cases to cause divorce. And yani, subhanallah, um, and in my time as doing Rukya, I found that the Brailwees and the Diobundis were brothers in this regard. You know, their Maulanas give Tawees, their Maulanas give Tawees. Their Maulanas ask for uh, their their peed subs ask for your name and your mother's name and an item of clothing uh, item of clothing or a picture their maulanas ask for your name and your mother's name and an item of clothing or a piece of jewelry or whatever it is okay exactly the same thing seeking the assistance of the jinn writing tawees attaching the hearts of the people to all of this rubbish and so you know, in reality, you know, when somebody talks about the Brailwees, we all say, yeah, yeah, Brailwees. But when someone talks about the Diobundi, it's like, how could you speak about them? They are exactly the same. Barakallah fiqh. Regarding the pictures and albums within their houses, wouldn't the pictures on £5, £10 notes fall under the same ruling? No, because one is a necessity. You have to have... Uh, money and notes and that type of thing it's a necessity yes when you're praying you shouldn't leave it out it should be covered up it should be put away whatever but you know money is a necessity akhi. so you know the pictures of your kids and your wife they're not necessity and Allah knows best can a woman perform ruqya over other women when she is menstruating absolutely not okay so when a woman is menstruating she shouldn't perform ruqya over other women absolutely not because you yourself are uh, you yourself are open uh, okay is it okay if the paintings are not portraits somebody asks a question is it okay um, is it okay if the paintings are not portraits I don't get that question so whoever you are if you could ask that again if you could please be clearer Jazakumullahu khaira. okay um, According to your experience, has autism been related always to jinn possession? No. Okay. According to my experience, autism is not always related to jinn possession. However, according to my experience, I have had people who I've recited on with autism and it has had major uh, effects on their situation, major effects on their condition by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Um, uh, Al Shaykh Muhammad, to clarify, Akhil Kareem, uh, we have a Diobandi Malana with us who is known to help people with uh, affected by jinn, and people say he did some special a'mal to get help from the jinn. Ikhwani, look, the jinn will not assist you until you do acts of taqarrub seeking nearness to them. They won't just work for you. You know, you don't get good Samaritans from amongst the jinn. They're not going to just come and say, oh yeah, you know that Maulana over there, great. Let's, you know, let's go and help him because we've got nothing better to do. We don't have our own lives to lead. We don't need to worship Allah. Ikhwani, you know, this is something that they're doing to fool the people. Oh yeah, you know, I've got good jinn working with me. They will not work with anybody until that person does acts of uh, seeking nearness to the 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 jinn and you know does acts of obedience to them they're not just going to come and work for you ikhwan um what if the photos are stored on the phone and not printed out well in that situation it's not it's not you know obvious um it's not obvious okay it's not obvious okay um i heard that even if you hide your photos, if you die, you'll be questioned on the Day of Judgment and can make haram. If someone can see it, can, can say something about your photos. For example, uh, this girl. This girl is so pretty. It was it was be strong belief or poor. I'm converted, so I'm just make sure. Okay. Look, um, when you take pictures on your phone, you need to be aware that 
um, you know, your phone may get lost, it may get stolen, uh, it may it may do any, you know, all of these different types of things, okay? Um, somebody on your Facebook might hack your Facebook. You need to be aware of these things, okay? My advice to sisters who are wearing hijab and niqab and that type of thing, don't take pictures of yourselves, you know? I just don't understand this whole thing of, you know, uh, posing and, you know, face full of makeup and put it on there and then you put an Islamic quote underneath and you're trying to make yourself look pious, you know? You're committing a sin, and then on top of that sin, you're trying to wash it away with that which is, uh, which is good. It's just ridiculous. And on top of that, you are opening yourself up for the evil eye. Oh, look, her eyelashes are really long. Maybe your eyelashes will fall off. Oh, look, she's got nice eyebrows. Maybe your eyebrows will fall off. And then you'll regret that. Okay, so don't bother. Uh, since Rukia is dua, is there any Rukia for getting a second wife? Once you have a second wife, you'll be making a lot of self Rukia. Does finding and destroying Taweez properly stop the effects of Sihar altogether? Can anyone uh, destroy them or is it best a Sheikh etc does it? Okay, good question. Okay, so usually the Taweez, the amulet, it is the contract between the magician and the jinn which has been written down. Destroying this contract, bi idhnillahi tabaraka wa ta'ala, it will destroy uh, the magic and then if the jinn remains you can remove it with regular ruqya by the permission of Allah in terms of who should destroy uh, a taweez then anybody can destroy a taweez how to destroy a taweez is written on my uh, website so I'm not going to go into too much detail how close do you think we are to the coming of the Dajjal there are major signs of the one eye symbol appearing everywhere and the hadith that makes it feel very close the messenger, alayhi salatu salam, he told us the eye and the hour have been sent like this and he held up his two fingers, okay? And from the signs of the coming of the hour is the death of the, the coming and the death of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No doubt, Allah says in the Qur'an, okay, that the hour is drawing close, okay? So the hour is close, ya ikhwan, the hour is close. As for when is the Masihid al Masihid Dajjal coming, then don't uh, you know don't make dua that it doesn't come in our lifetimes. Okay? Uh, you know, just make dua that it doesn't come in our uh, our lifetimes, Ya Ikhwan. Okay. The Prophet alayhi salam said, Ma bayna Adam ila qiyam is sa'ati uh, that there is not between the creation of Adam and the hour a creation greater and, and, and more dangerous and in terms of a fitna greater than al Masihid Dajjal or kama qala alayhi salatu salam okay do angels not enter a house even if the photographs have been hidden as all of them can't be destroyed due to number but be put in a box Fear Allah to the best of your ability. If you weren't practicing and then you became practicing uh, and you stopped taking pictures but you've got a whole box full of them and whatever, you can't get rid of them because you know there are some other members of the family who you know are not allowing you to get rid of them. Put them away. Put them away and make tawbah for that. And you know, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah will not burden a soul with more than it can handle. Okay? Celebrities are very heavy in black magic and possession and I'm misleading the news. Yeah, absolutely. Um, people talk about the Illuminati. Is there any reality in that? Um, yes, I genuinely believe that the uh, re uh, Illuminati, they are very, very real. Um, okay, so uh, the question was related to the photos um, that we need to remove from the house. Can we keep paintings, painting of landscapes with no faces? Absolutely, there's no problem with landscapes and that type of thing. How can someone do Rukya on themselves? My sister got Rukya done, but she ended up having problems with her Rakya, ended up liking it or propose, and now she doesn't like going to Rakis. Um, I've got lots of videos on how to perform Rukya. Okay? Um, how many jinn can go inside your body? Allah knows best. One is enough. How can you tell the difference between jinn possession and mental problems? I have a relative who is in a mental hospital in Leicester and, in, and I believe is possessed as he says he has someone else living in him. Um, I've got a, I think I've got a, a video about the difference between jinn possession and mental illnesses. I think that's on my website. Please go there. Jazakumullah khair. Uh, what are all the symbols and numbers used in Taweez? What are their origin? 
Okay, so um, you get the um, the seven stars of Babylon. So when you see the seven, like the different types of stars and the different shapes, then you got the seven stars of Babylon. Then you got the um, the uh, Persian magic uh, using the Abjad system. Then you've got the Ghazali's triangle, which is the numbers in a grid. Okay. Um, I just found some Taweez in the trees planted in my home. So how can we destroy it? And how can I find the Taweez was about and who did it? Okay. Um, in terms of finding out and that type of thing is very difficult unless you find a name or somebody, you know, you can track them down. Um, in terms of destroying it, then go to my website, rukya-qa.co.uk. Um, what to do if being a student of knowledge, you just can't study as much as required. Something or the other happens, can't be done, i.e. the heart doesn't affirm. It doesn't take time out for studies. Ikhwani, you have to um, you have to train yourself. Um, you know, you have to train yourself, and you have to train your heart to sit down and seek knowledge. And it's not always the fact that uh, you know I find it difficult to seek knowledge. I must be possessed. I must be evil. I we spend hours on social media. We spend hours watching television. We spend hours on the Xbox. We spend hours. Uh, watching sport, whatever it is. But when it comes to seeking knowledge, we want to immediately be able to sit down and do that. It's a long, difficult process, Ikhwani. And there are going to be times where you don't want to do it, but you have to force yourself. If a menstruating woman is in the presence of a possessed person, will she be affected? Again, I can't just give you a one-size-fits-all answer. However, in that situation, I would make adhkar, أَعُوذُ بِكَلِمَاتِ اللَّهِ التَّامَّاتِ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا خَلَقْ as the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, he said um, that whoever says this three times, then he will be protected until he leaves that place. Um, if any Mawlana claims to have links to jinn for Rukya purposes, do we immediately flag them down as suspect? Yes, absolutely. I know someone who suffers from extreme anxiety to the point where they can't even perform salah. They listen to music and free mix. Is this jinn possession? You know, uh, the Prophet sallallahu told us that when a person sins, um, a black dot is placed on their heart. Okay, and if they make tawbah, then it's removed. But if they don't, then the if they carry on sinning, then the blackness it continues and it continues and it continues until it forms a covering over their hearts. And Allah uh, says, "Kalla bal rana ala qulubihim bima kanu yaksibun." But there's a uh, there is a covering over their hearts because of that which they have done, that which they have earned. Okay, so what I want to uh, say about this is it may be jinn possession, but it's maybe that the person has gone on sinning, 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 sinning so much until they can't pour, perform salah. Their sins are preventing them from the salah. So what they need to do is they need to make sincere tawbah, sincere repentance. But look, if a person wants to carry on listening to music, you know, I, it's, it amazes me. You say to somebody, you know, stop listening to music. He says, I can't. It's so difficult. And you go into his car and he's got CDs and MP3s everywhere. Maybe, maybe people don't use CDs anymore. But, you know, he's got, he's got his music everywhere. It's all around him. And he's not actually taking the steps. And then he wants, he's expecting results. This is, we are lazy. Wallahi, we are lazy. And then we want results. Okay? So... You know, it may be jinn possession, but it may be a person's uh, own sins which are preventing them from the salah. What is the worst type of magic um, when you have come across? Ikhwani, all magic is kufr and magic generally, it ruins a person's life. So it doesn't matter what me, myself, the worst that I've come across. You know, people, their lives are being ruined by this, by this filth. So we have to be careful. Um, is split personality disorder related to jinn possession? So again, look, um, with all of the uh, the diagnoses that people are given, you know, my diagnosis, your diagnosis, that type of thing, with all of this, we need to, there needs to be more to it. Maybe a person is hearing voices in his head because all he does is smoke weed, okay? He smokes marijuana, okay? He takes drugs. And as a result of that, some of these side effects, they are, you know, paranoia and that type of thing. Or maybe it is a general case of, Having a split personality, yani the, you know, a person is hearing these voices and it's not from drugs and it's not, and so it's a genuine case of rukya. So what do you do? Make rukya in that situation, okay? Um, can a, a Iraqi male touch a sister's head when performing rukya who is not a mahram? Why? Why? Is his touching the head going to make his rukya more powerful? 
Is his touch going to make the Qur'an more effective? Is his touch going to harm the jinn more than the Qur'an is? You know, I, I'm amazed. Why? Why? No, he's not allowed. Uh, I have sisters. They said she got more than one jinn. Are they right? I don't know. Um, is it just another word for jinn possession? I didn't get that. Um, how to recite the three quls on children at Maghrib time to blow in the palm of the hands and recite three quls only once in them and wipe on the child three times or place our hand on the child and recite three quls three times. So what the Prophet ﷺ would do, he would recite each of the three quls three times each and then he would blow into his hands and then he would pass his hands over his body. And when uh, he was unable to do that, then he would recite and then Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha would um, would pass her hands over his body, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah knows best. Um, but don't forget, as well as the quls, then there is the uh, then there are the du'as, um, like he would recite on Hassan and Hussein, u'idhu kuma bi kalimatillahi tamma, etc. You can find them in Fortress of a Muslim, inshallah. The case of a student of knowledge, which I had mentioned, the student has ample time, does no entertainment anything, yet can't study, just sleeps all day long. Time to get to the gym, time to go for a run in the morning, tell him to sort his diet out. On top of that, he should be making dua. On top of that, he should be making ruqya. On top of that, he should be striving against his own soul. We need to take the whole, take a holistic approach, inshallah. Um, when doing self ruqya, the person feels their body is in so much pain. Does that mean the ruqya is work working? Is it hurting the jinn? In general, yes. The pain is from the jinn. The Quran, it doesn't come with any side effects or anything like this. Okay. Um, can sisters take their niqab off for work? How to? Um, we're, we're dealing with ruqya um, related que questions here, uh, sister. Wa jazakumullahu khaira. Brother, we have rules for brothers to not touch non mahams. How can we inculcate these rulings in the field of medicine these days? You know, medicine is different. There might there may be a necessity. The doctor needs to touch a woman in order to. Uh, feel for lumps, for example, tumors. The doctor needs to touch the woman in order to operate, in order to assist her in some way, and he can't do that without touching. This is a necessity. But the raqi can make ruqya without touching. It's not a necessity. The only time a man can touch the the, the raqi can touch the woman in this way is if. She tries to attack him or she's trying to harm herself and in order to, in the case of necessity, either protect himself, protect somebody else or protect her from the jinn, then he can touch her in this situation but he only does what is required and as a bare minimum. Okay, but we don't need what people are doing now. Oh, I need to put my hand on your head. Then I need to walk it down your shoulder out in, you know, uh, subhanallah. It's, uh, we don't need that. Okay, we don't need that. Uh, what's the best we can do to try and mitigate any chance of getting possessed by a jinn? Your aqidah, your salah, your adhkar, your tawakkul, your seeking refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are all the ways that you can uh, prevent these types of things. Uh, you know, uh, don't throw things across the room without saying bismillah. Don't when you're pouring water, hot water down the drain, etc. Make sure you first say bismillah. Don't spend long times. Uh, and go out uh, or, or you know under the tree urinating under the tree and other places where the jinn are known to reside stay away from these types of things ikhwani you know just keep your wits about you use common sense inshallah can insomnia and panic disorder be caused by shayateen uh, yes sometimes it can um, however again it, it, you know it may be something else it may be something else Okay, so I've got a question here, Ikhwani. Um, somebody's messaged me and they've said, um, I've asked someone, listen, this is somebody who has asked somebody on behalf of two other people. Okay, look at the situation that we're in now. He said, I've asked somebody legit to read something and Allah will make it possible for him to find out what's the trouble with you both. Okay, alarm bells should start ringing there immediately. Yeah, alarm bells start ringing there immediately. I've asked somebody to find out, uh, read something and find out what's wrong with you. And then Allah will show him, uh, you know, what's the trouble with you both. Where is this from the sunnah? Can he bring an evidence? Can he bring a hadith? Can he bring something at all except for his own whims and his desires? Okay. 
Forgive me if I've done something wrong, but I couldn't see you to argue. The man explains, listen to this. The man explains and confirms my doubt that there's effect of jealousy and evil. I pressed to ask who it was, but I was told that the couple themselves will see that person in their dream after completing the course of reading things from the Quran Majid. Uh, it is entirely up to you both if you want to complete the course by reading the Quran to remove the evil. Inshallah, you'll see the person yourself in your dream. It has to be done for 21 days every day. I would recommend you both start this Monday, inshallah. After that, you can both tell me if you saw somebody. Uh, now, he said here, this is what the man says. Uh, the treatment I am providing here is one of the easiest Quranic methods in order to remove black magic or evil eye and overcome the symptoms associated with nazar e bad or black magic. The treatment for that is to fill half a bucket of water, stand outside the bathroom whilst putting both hands in the bucket and recite seven times Durood Sharif, seven times Surat Al-Fatiha, seven times Ayat Al-Kursi, seven times the four Quls. Seven times the rule sharif. After reciting, blow on yourself while the hands up to the wrists are in the bucket. Once the recitation is done, take the hands out and then the bucket into the bathroom. Prepare yourself for shower. Put this bucket of water on yourself from head to toe. Make sure it goes to most of the place with your body. And then after that, you can have a normal shower. 21 baths should take place, one every day. Both husband and wife need to do the above and the magic or the evil eye will be out. Okay? Now look. Look, Ikhwani. Okay? Question or, or, you know, alarm bell number one is he's going to read something and he's going to find out what's wrong with you. Okay. Alarm bell number two is you are going to see the person in your dream. Now, imagine that man. Okay. Imagine that man. Shaitan comes to him in his dream and he sees his mother-in-law. Okay. In that dream. Imagine he sees his mother-in-law in that dream. Okay, what have we done? We have completely not only ruined a marriage, we've ruined two families. There's no chance he's gonna be he's gonna have bad suspicion of his mother in law, of his in laws, you know, etc. etc. Okay? And you know, then the whole issue of recite this twenty one times, an X amount of time, and then you will definitely find out what's wrong with you if there's something done on you. You know, Ikhwani, to give something a particular time or a particular place or a particular number or a particular way in, in the religion, you need an evidence, okay? You need an evidence, okay? So, uh, you know, this person is just, uh, as they would say, chatting bubbles. Uh, okay, should the bathroom doors be closed when we have them attached to the room? There's no problem, inshallah, just close them and say bismillah. Can learning about the jinn cause the jinn to possess you? No, learning about the jinn will not cause the jinn to possess you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about their world and their creation in the Quran. How many chances does a person have for getting evil life? Because mostly, because mostly people say everything is in your mind. People are not sitting there to give you evil all the time. You know, the evil eye is not necessarily given with an intention to give a person the evil eye. Nobody sits there and thinks, I want to give him the evil eye. Sometimes, you know, a person can get the, the eye and they can give it to themselves. They can give it to their children. They can give it to their loved ones. I've got lots of lectures on the evil eye. So please watch those, inshallah. The Rukya, which includes Falaq Nas and Ikhlas and the Blonde Palm. Right. So, you... After Salat al-Fajr and Salat al-Maghrib, you recite al-Ikhlas falaq al-Nas three times each. Before going to bed, you recite it three times each and blow into the palms of your hands. Okay, the blowing into the palms of the hands is not legislated after Maghrib and after the Fajr prayers. Okay, it's legislated after when you are about to go to sleep. Okay, Ikhwani, last few questions now. Um, any advice to people who are having problems getting married The person is not interested in marriage and dislikes talking about it In another case, every suit they come across ends up with a problem So it gets called off Okay. The person may have, you know, uh, Rukia related issues um, Whereby, um, you know, they have a jinn with them Who's fallen in love with them Doesn't want them to get married And so every single person who comes The jinn later on goes uh, you know, in that day and causes harm to that person, gives them prob pro pro uh, you know, problems and trouble. And so as a result of that, they say, you know what, this, this lady or this man is too much problem. We don't want to go near it. But at the same time, let's be practical. You know, some of the sisters, some of the brothers, they want perfection. And then they wonder why they can't get married. And they think that it's jinn problems. Um, what should I do if my family members who are staying under one roof enjoy listening to music at home, despite my telling that music is haram and that it is inviting the shayateen in? 
make dua for them, Akhi. Make dua for them that Allah Jalla wa Ala guides them away from this. And, uh, you know, you do what you can within your area, your space, your bedroom, whatever it is, to listen to the Quran and that type of thing. Even if it means you put the headphones in and you listen to the Quran. But make dua for them, inshallah. Um, I have been reading Rukya on my daughter now, daughter for a year now. Um, she still has symptoms on and off. Me and my husband have marital issues to what to do. Make Rukya on yourself. It may be that your daughter's issues are linked with yourself. As I said the other day, that often um, you know, the children are affected because the uh, mother has issues. Okay, So make Rukya upon yourself. Um, and this will benefit you, insha'Allah. Okay? Um, no, I'm not based at Green Lane Masjid. Um, my husband suddenly gets really mad and fights with me and starts hitting himself. Lately, doesn't pray salah, even if I tell him, could he be possessed? Wallahi, um, I don't know. I don't know. And, you know, there's lots of things, Ikhwani, like um, watching um, pornography and these types of things. They can lead to... Serious effects, serious effects on a person And I'm not saying that this particular case is anything linked with that But what I am saying is that we have so much munkar, so much evil So much uh, yani misguidance around us that it takes its toll on us And so, you know, if he stopped praying salah and all of these things You need to you know, give him uh, soft, gentle advice and make dua for him uh, And you know We can't say that he could be possessed He may be But at the same time Maybe not Okay um, Can you help me to get in touch with sisters To be my mentor To start learning the deen um, I don't know where to begin with that um, Maybe one of the sisters If she's knowledgeable inshallah She can get in touch with you um, But just be careful who you take your knowledge from Is listening to Rukya the same as reciting it Does it have the same benefit No Listening to it will not have the same benefit as reciting it, and that is not Rukya. Okay, Ikhwani, it's uh, it's late now, um, and uh, we will catch you soon. Bi idnillahi tabaraka wa ta'ala. As for Yasir al Hanafi, tell him to have fun refuting me. Kul mutu bi ghaydikum. Wa jazakumullahu khaira. سبحانك الله سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.